Hey guys, so I wanted to do a recap of my 2023, which was my first year specializing in locks. I'm so grateful for my job opportunity. Um, this year, I did a lot of things outside of my comfort zone. Even making these videos, there's been videos from 10 years ago of me um, documenting what I'm doing to my hair, how I'm treating my hair, um, things that I have learned, um, even things from my spiritual works, I've been documenting them and I have never shared. Um, this year, uh, I've been led to share and I've been very obedient, even though it's been challenging. I expose uh, a lot of different vulnerabilities, but of course things that I don't mind for other people to share. You know, sometimes you guys see me in my bathroom area and it could be first time while I'm crazy. <laughs> and I'll just keep it at that. But with that being said, um, I wanted to make this video because I have a lot of colleagues that have um, decided to not return back to hair after the scare of 2020. And even me, um, at that time, you guys know that my base was actually in New Jersey, even though I was living in Brooklyn. So when there was that uh, travel ban of not being able to cross town to town, I had to sit down. Um, with that being said, at that time, I was scared. You know, I feel like a lot of things that stylists or service providers don't talk about is making sure you set up yourself for an emergency um, like 2020 because it happens fast. One moment you're the shampoo person um, and you don't have one client wanting you to touch them and next minute you have a book where you can't even take a day off. Um, and I went through those extremes several times. So um, finance wise, everything I had just literally grown. Um, and I, I want to make this video for the person on the fence thinking that textured hair is not enough for you to uh, provide for your family. It's not enough for you to take a chance on. It's not enough for you to, to learn or um, even for the person who feels like um, they can't specialize in something else. Um, I don't want to make this video too long, and I'm sorry if I'm saying um. um I did write my, my biggest points down that I shared on my Instagram post. And you could follow my Instagram page at China underscore Vanity Hair Studio NYC. That's my Instagram page where you'll see my body of work and my growth um, has been documented there too. Um, first thing I want to say is I am so grateful to Jesus for keeping me. I have been a ball of nerves. I am someone who overthinks. I am someone who the details matters for me, but it it's also one of my biggest... Um, downfalls because I could be towards the end of my work and I'm doubting like this is not good enough um something I could have did better I'm literally criticizing my work while I'm trying to finish my work and then that stagnates the process so one I want to say to you um being a service provider, being a hairstylist, I want to specifically talk to that young hairstylist or that hairstylist that it's, it's not just for the money because I never did it just for the money. It was something that I was literally, it keeps me up at night. Like, this is my passion. Like, it went from something that I needed to then something that I couldn't go without for me personally. Um, and then it was something that my mom encouraged me to take on as a career. Um, but it was something that was tied to a lot of shame for me. And a lot of women of color have shame tied to their hair. So I want to say this. I might get emotional. My lady friend's supposed to be coming soon. But aside from that, it is also the first of the year. With that being said, 
um, to that hairstylist who thinks that you have to stay in the box because that's what you finally got good at. I want to let you know that it is okay to try something else that is calling you, that you're interested in. You will pay as much um, attention to it. You will nurture it and you are going to grow in it and it will it would grow positively. So take that risk. Um, I got my cosmetology license over 12 years ago. I always, from cosmetology school, wanted to specialize in textured hair. By God's grace, I happened to find my, my previous boss, Miss Fallon. She was looking for an apprentice. I worked with Miss Fallon for almost two years. Um, and I was able to work in Harlem and in Manhattan. I was able to do my first um, New York City Fashion Week. I was able to also be her assistant while she did um, an editorial uh, gig. She was the creative hair director for a very big shoot. Um, and I was able to see that there is no cap here. It, there's only a cap with what you put yourself in. Um, for me, in working with Miss Fallon and her skills, which was coloring, braiding, natural hair. She did a lot of silk presses, but also um, she taught me the principle of offering hair care as a service. I didn't know um, that that was possible. So with seeing that your clients do want education from you, they do want independence too, and there is a market for that. I was able to find my next boss, Miss Tina, who um, became, who was a celebrity hairstylist. Um, she had a Manhattan location. We was on 86 in Columbus. I worked there for as a shampoo person assisting Miss Fallon and then Miss Tina offered me um, to be her own apprentice the days I wasn't working for Miss Fallon. Miss Fallon was okay with it and I was able to learn weave like celebrity weave foundations like um, editorial hair. I was surprised. I didn't think like, oh, that doesn't have anything to do with textured hair. A lot of these people have their healthy hair, heads of hair underneath whatever unit, whatever install that they're wearing. Okay, um, Miss Tina decided to open her second location, which was in Edgewater, New Jersey. And she asked if I was willing to come in, come into to, to, to that location. Now, in that location, I was no longer just a shampoo girl. I now was a entry-level hairstylist. So I was doing blows and silk presses. During my time in Edgewater, um, I was able to learn a salon assistant managerial skills. I was able to learn um, how to retain clientele, how to keep clientele, different promotions. I was able to learn networking. We did different vending um, opportunities. I was hosting. I went on my own. I got different skills and I got to see firsthand the entrepreneurship of what what can happen with a successful hair business? Hey, then 2020 happened. And I stepped back. I went into what I was doing before, which was in healthcare. You know, when I was in college, I was um, minoring in business administration and I was majoring in social work. I know that sounds so crazy. I'm always for the people in some type of way. Um, with that being said, um, I ended up getting married. Um, a year later, ended up having my first child. And I definitely felt like, can I? still have the same vibrancy can i still give the same tenacity it takes to build up yes 
I literally was still thinking, what should I do with my hair during my pregnancy when I was tired and I was sick? Um, how come people don't make videos about this? Why don't they share the, the educational parts? Um, what happens with your hormone changes? All of those things I was learning firsthand. Um, then my current boss now, Miss Natasha from Vanity Hair Studios, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. She posted a, a reel looking for experienced or non-experienced licensed cosmetologists or barbers. When I tell you guys, I don't even know if I could really explain to you guys how conflicted I was when I saw it. So to that person thinking, I don't even have my hair resume together. I didn't. I had all of my clerical, all of my administration um, opportunities, all of my um, internships listed, my cover letter had nothing to do with my passion and what I've been doing um, so long. It was it was with everything else, you know. I know us colored women, we're always working, you're providing for yourself, so we do multiple things. So with that being said, I seen that post. Mind you, Vanity was the place I actually wanted to get my micro locks done. They had a wait list at the time, and I just could not wait. I I just felt like <sighs> the money's here. Before it goes to something else, I want to do this. What I learned from my own experience is there's a way that a consultation should be led. There is also a way where you should lead your conversation with your stylist, being the client and also being the stylist. I actually got to experience that. But I want to go back to my point of trying to specialize in locks. I was so afraid because I felt like the things that I learned um, would not help me <laughs> um, on this venture. Yes, sorry, my daughter, she just needed some attention real quick. Um, with that being said, I seen the post, I sent my actual um, clerical resume, because I just didn't want to miss the opportunity, and I definitely sent my referrals um, from my previous bosses. I didn't expect to be called. I was so upset that I sent it. I felt shame. I felt so much shame that I, I, I was just like, you're so underqualified. Like, even though they say no experience, it was just like, did you try? But you know, a reel is within only shows for 24 hours. So that was really the reason why I just responded. I didn't want to miss it because you you could see like when it's about to like leave, and I was just like, "Whoa!" I was literally at my job, and I was just like, "This is a dream come true," but this is not you. You can't do this. You shouldn't do this. This is crazy. You're not going to get a call back. And I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed, I prayed. And, you know, that quiet, heavenly voice was just like, you're going to be so much more hurt if you don't try. So I decided to listen to that voice. I sent it. And then I said, Chino, you know you're not going to get a call back. This is so unprofessional. I love to be a prof I love to, you know, uphold professional standards. And I was just like, that, your resume, you're on, this is not you. <laughs> um, I did hear back. It was just a phone interview. I was scared. My mom was all over the place. During the interview, I was just like, you ain't getting this. Um, but I definitely wanted to be as truthful. I definitely did not 
I just said the the only thing I could do for myself is just do and be me. And then I was allowed to get a on-site interview. I was shocked. I say all of this to say even if they they say experience or non-experience, it's okay to try. Um it's okay to try because what I'm learning now is there there isn't a lot of lacticians in New York. Um, it is something the clients are often complaining about. It is something other lacticians are complaining about. So don't be scared to try. Um, the next point I wanna I want to add into my first year of specializing in locks is I hurt I did more bad than good thinking that everything I knew before could not apply to this like it was a completely different entity it was a completely different subject hair will always be hair textured hair is always going to be textured hair whether it is in a loose or in a matted state I, I said to myself, hey, how did you detangle your tangled loose hair? How did you detangle um, your, 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 your locks? All of those keys, how does hair color? How should you color dry hair? What happens when hair sheds? What does it need? Um, how does it react to moisture? What is low porosity and high porosity? All of those fundamentals still apply to matted hair your skills that you obtain elsewhere can be applied to this new thing i think that was one of the major keys for me um yes so i definitely um i realized that that was a major key okay I think my third point that I want to round off to in my first year of being a loctician is mm, your strengths are going to keep you during the challenge. Um, I'm very detail oriented. I definitely see I definitely see each client as myself, um, whether or not we might agree on personality stance or. Uh, or anything else I think that's the best way for me to try to summarize that um, I just seen like hey how when I know I'm human some days I'm not my regular self and I still would want someone to have grace for me so I try to approach it that way all the time like hey um, imagine you have a relationship with your stylist and they're, they're asking you to trust somebody else you don't know, even though you trust your stylist and you know, they're not going to give you someone that can hurt you, but it's still an awkward exchange. So I gave myself grace in understanding this is new and challenging too for the client. So breathe, be extra patient, be extremely, um, compassionate uh, and, 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 and don't be quick to make a judgment my, my, my biggest point of drive was do it well of course I, I was so angry at myself when I didn't finish a retie on time it literally would like kill my week it would kill my confidence. It it. Sorry, my baby. Um, she's getting her first bit of super jumu, and she's excited. Um, but it. Um, I definitely told myself like I can't stop. Like even the days. This was another point. Even when I failed. I didn't stop during the failure. I had to push through. Like, okay, you didn't finish. 
What could you learn? What did you do? How much times you moved the clip? How much times you touched the comb? How do you actually need that much clips? Did you um, drench it with enough water to part it correctly instead of having to repart a section three times? You know, I had to start paying attention to that and not like, okay, the task wasn't complete. I'm just a bad person. It was just like, what did you do? Um, I took notes. I made different little video tidbits. I don't know about you guys, but I like to record myself. Um, even going through their motions, like, this is what I did. What do I think I could do better? I definitely always stayed open to critique, whether good or bad, whether I was right or wrong. <laughs> um, I had to just take a quick pause because the soup is actually ready. Um, so I want to definitely point out my third point when you feel that there's an opportunity that is a dream you you don't get to to say whether you qualify or not you do have the responsibility of being obedient Every day I go to work and anywhere I ever worked, I always did it to glorify God. I know this is going to sound crazy. There are times where people are going to come out of their necks. If you're from Brooklyn, you know the term. <laughs> there are times where you're going to feel like you shouldn't be working. <laughs> Uh, which is one of the reasons why it's hard for me to watch those slave movies because sometimes it just makes me feel like, what am I doing here? All of that to say, you know, I like to crack a couple of jokes and um, I'm being really vulnerable here, but I want to, if I could talk to the younger Chena, if I could talk to the Chena that said that you don't have a future in doing the gift that God gave you, I wanted to say to her, he gave you everything to succeed. It is your job to use every skill you obtain to better the situation you're actually in. I am so grateful that I am disciplined and ambitious and motivated, detail-oriented, because it matters right now. Um... I used to think retires were the scariest things. And then I got my first installation. And I said, what can prepare me for a correct installation is a correct consultation. So during the consultation, sometimes you, you get to service someone you don't get to do their consultations with. Um, but with that being said, you know, speaking to the client before you start, asking for those visual indicators that they have for their end goals um, and properly assessing their hair while they're sitting in front of you, you know, there's several times where I parted and parted to just look and really understand this person's format. You know, everyone, everyone's skin is different. Everyone's hair is different. People have sensitivities in different areas. Um, and there's skin, you know, the scalp is skin. And some people have moving scalp, which is like the, the skin just moves different. So... Um, I want to say to that person, to, to China, like being grateful for your opportunity and making sure that you show that gratefulness. I didn't take any person willing to sit in front of me for granted. Oh no. <laughs> um, I know one of my weak points is multitasking like you know with the way that i think i literally attach each thing together to make it one thing it makes me memorize things better when i find the similarity of a thing and it and that's just how i learn 
learn how you learn try to retain information the best way you learn it and keep it um so with that being said even getting skills that you're 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 not good at or you think you're not good at there's times people see skills that that you didn't even know you had i didn't know that i could um uh, assist a manager or assist a salon i didn't think uh about that but miss tina saw that in me you know she said no you can do this you can you can you can you pay attention to detail you can execute a goal i'm looking at her like but in those good critiques be grateful someone noticed those skills and then work on them because those same skills i got at miss tina's salon i was able to take into my clerical administration positions grow from there and then the same uh administration jobs that i thought wouldn't have nothing to do with hair the skills i learned and mastered there helped me today so let me just say to you you didn't waste any time you didn't miss your window you you it's not all for not persist and move on i don't know where this journey is going to take me but I am so grateful for where I have been. And I never thought I would have been there. I never thought I would have been doing fashion, New York Fashion Week several times. I never thought I could work with celebrity stylists. I never thought um, I can work with a, a, a world-renowned lock shop. Like, everywhere I have stepped into, you would ask me and I would never think never think but I know it's God and I'm grateful to God and I just wanted to share because I know there's a lot of uh things on social media that discourage people from thinking hairstylist is a hairstyling is a career there's a lot of things that discourage clients um with people who are actually noble and want to do this so I just want to put this information out here it is worth it it is worth it financially, it is worth it physically, it is worth it spiritually, it is worth it. Yes, it's hard, you're going to be standing for hours, but it's something that you already love to do. Like I know until it's done, I, I am restless. It drives me crazy. <laughs> and there's somebody out there that's just like, yeah, I want it to look good. I don't stop till it looks good. You're not getting out my chair until you can tell someone she did that and you're proud. Not what, you know, their untrained eye sees. It's what your eyes like. Yeah, I could do better every time. I could do better. I want to do better. I need to do better. I got to do better. I got to do better. What else? What else? What else? I literally... uh you know, would stay up at night and look at those, the work that my salon currently produces and you're just like, bro, how could you get that? Bro, did you hear what she said? Did you hear what they used? Okay, are you using the tools they provided you so you can execute it? I learned how to hold that African parting tool. It looks so different. Feels so different than a rat tail comb that you used to, but I had to come out like, no, this this has a purpose. Why do they use it? They use it, and th this is what it produces. So, be open to trying new things. That's the only way you can actually grow. Always looking for extra education, and there's times when I needed more. And I actually went to YouTube University, and I was able to take the information from the salon. Take even the client's experience, listen to the person's experience, and be like, ah, understood. So, before this gets any longer, I want to say that my first year was the most challenging. I expect every year to be just as much challenging. Um, <laughs> I know things might not be as necessarily new, but I know with me, it's about consistency. It's one thing to learn how to do something, and it's another thing to constantly produce what you learn, um, which is my goal, 
to produce quality, amazing work that withstands with the company I'm working for now. Um, and to grow in other skill sets, I am learning a lot more administration work at, at the back end of entrepreneurship. If I really do want to have my own salon one day, I don't know <clears throat> if that is what I still am standing on. That was my reason before, but now I'm kind of feeling like a beauty academy or education um, place. And I'm going to let God fine tune that for me, but I know I have a lot of skills to obtain and master um, and creativity to display. Your creativity matters here. It's not to be wasted. Things that you like. I, I do love color. Um, it is something that I enjoy doing. I enjoy the transformation. One thing I will say that's different from locks um, versus like textured hair. You do a style and you get to see the end gratification right away versus, you know, I can install someone and now I'm looking forward to year two year three of how those locks have settled, how the hair has transformed, even in watching my own transformation. So I'm going to sum this up and say, you can do it. You're unstoppable. You're made great. Do it. Go for it. Don't stop. Be who you are while you're doing it. I think that was one of the things that held me um, I stay true to myself. I stay true to my discipline. I stay true. Like, I know I can't uh, talk and, and do hair because for me, it's really critical. Like, I'm in my brain. Like, okay, how do I feel about this line? How do I feel about this part? Is it good? Is it equal? Look back. Look forward. Is it talking to me? Okay, I feel good about this. No, I don't. I want to do this again. Take it out. Like, I'm going through my mind in that. I am so grateful. My current boss, she lets me work to my own music. Um, if a lot of people go into a salon and the salon has a curated atmosphere, which is great. I respect that entrepreneur's uh, ambiance. But to be able to have your own curated uh, it's kind of like when you have your workout playlist, it made a huge difference. Like I didn't even know, you know, but I also learned like be open to who you're working for. Like she was just like, if you like to work to music, you can. So I was just like, oh, I have music that calms my nerves. I have music that helps me go. I have music that pushes me. I have music even worship music that encourages me that God is with me right here while I'm doing something so challenging, while I'm taking the biggest risk of my life. Um, it has been the most rewarding. It has been the most rewarding. I literally can't even take a breath from where I started to where I am right now. I can't believe it. Um, my goal when I uh, knew I was going to start full-time was to be able to do um, installations within two years. And I got to do it before that. That was my own personal goal. Like, oh, I'm going to force myself to learn and to, 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 to meet the requirements of the establishment. And hopefully within two years, they will let me. And it happened before that. So stick to your goals. Stick to your principles. Um, obtain the good skills that you need. Um... I encourage you to go for the the challenges. I was challenged. I was challenged. Um, and I practice. I practice on my sister. I practice on my husband. I just finished doing my mom's um, uh, installation. I am so grateful. And her hair looks so good. Uh, I will be keeping you guys updated on that. I don't want this to be too long. So, like I said, you can do it. This is your time. You're called for a reason. You're, you're not going to be like anybody else. And you're not meant to be. We, we all can't be the loud, boisterous, outgoing, extroverted uh, stylists. You know, there are introverts. There are the in-betweens, which is what I like to say. There's sometimes where I can be very jokey. 
You know, there's some times where I'm just like, I just need to focus. And I, I'm learning something new and I need to be quiet. You know, there's some times where, and, and understand that you're sharing a space with a person. You know, so that person energy, you kind of have to respect what they are requesting of you. As service providers, not everyone wants to listen to your voice. And that's fine. I know what my voice sounds like. I know the words that I say. Sometimes I speak the English in in me translating the Creole because I, I know a lot of you won't understand even though I am American I'm first generation American but I learned Creole first and sometimes when I'm under pressure or nervous I'm thinking in my original language so the English comes out like translated Creole I know it's okay I explained it the best way I could um but happy new year I can't wait to summarize year two God willing of being a loctician specializing in locks um, you don't have to commit to neglecting all other areas, but when you're focusing on something, the more you dive deep, the more you obtain quicker. So I appreciate you guys. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, if you like videos like this, let me know. Um, glory to Jesus. I am here. I will continue to share. Um, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Happy New Year. It's 2024. Can you believe it? Peace. Oh, my slogan. Do it. Get it done. Next. <laughs>